Trinity Exposed, number 14. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. It's a title for Jesus Christ. Lowercase w is the written word or the spoken word. All right. There are seven references to the capital W, manifest word of God, in your King James Bible. And it's interesting because the NIV, I did a video many, many years ago about how the NIV removes one of the references to the capital W word of God. And they do it the two other unique titles of Jesus Christ, where it's 777 in the King James, the NIV removes one of each, and so it brings it down to 666. You can watch that video if you're interested. Um, but it says here, John chapter 1, we're going to go over the seven references to the capital Word of God, and we're going to see again, the Word is Jesus Christ, and He's called God. And in context, it's God the Father. Let's look at this. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. If you saw one of the other Trinity Exposed moment or Trinity Exposed videos that I did, uh, the Bible talks about in Romans chapter one how that they glorified him not as God. You know, speaking about Jesus Christ, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. See, people can come out and they can say, "Well, Jesus is God, but he's not God the Father." You say, "Well, then he's a separate God." No, they're one and the same God. Well, if they're one and the same, then he has to be the same as God the Father. No, they're two separate gods. But they're not two separate gods. They're two separate persons, but they're just one and the same God. <laughs> Even though the word persons never appears in relation to the Godhead, um, neither does God the Son. Jesus is never called a God that's separate from God the Father. People are weird. John chapter 1, verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the man, but of God, nor of the will of, of man, excuse me, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus came from the Father, absolutely. But they're not two separate gods. How do you know? Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Okay, it's talking about Jesus Christ. Verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, the word was with God and the word was God. Now, it wouldn't make any sense if you say, well, see, Jesus is God the Son. Okay, then why does it say in verse 1 there, the word was with God? If he is God the Son, then why would you need to say he's with God? He's with God the Father, and the Word was God. He is God the Father. Do you understand? Jesus, the body. God the Father, the soul. Holy Ghost, the Spirit. These three are one. So simple, if you believe the Bible. 1 John chapter 1, start out here, it says, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. Who is John writing about? Jesus. Verse 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Why was it with the Father? Well, because the Father is inside of Jesus. They can separate. Certainly. You see that throughout Scripture. Oneness, uh, Pentecostalism or modalism, they teach that Jesus is just one and he kind of shapeshifts or something like that. Well, that's false. That's not true. Um, Jesus Christ and the Father can separate, just as your body and your, and your soul can separate as a Christian. All right? Certainly. All right? But we don't have control over it. With the Godhead, the unique thing that separates is different between God and man is the fact that God can split up. 
body, soul, spirit can go and perform different things and do different things. But they're one being. All right? They're not three different persons with their each body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit. That's what you have to understand here. If my soul leaves my body, I'm not going to be able to consciously be able to do other things and whatever else. We've been talking about that in a future Trinity Exposed video here. But uh, verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ the Son of, of God the Father? Absolutely. Again, the people lie about me on that. They'll say, Brian Denlinger teaches that, that Jesus is not the Son. I have never said that. I say he is not God the Son. He is not a separate God. And the term God the Son does not appear in the King James Bible. First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. You have an NIV, your new version takes out 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Um, talked about that in other studies. But again, those three are in heaven as body, soul, spirit. But it's one being. Not three persons and one God. That doesn't even make any sense. Three separate persons, but they all can claim the title God. Well, how is it that if Jesus is this way, was he God on earth when God the Father is up in heaven? but they're just one God? It doesn't make any sense. That would have to be a third of God, you see. God's not the author of confusion. That's what this whole Trinity thing is about. It's confusing. But uh, Re Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 13, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Jesus Christ. Okay? Seven references to Jesus as the capital Word of God. Interesting because seven spirits of God, it's... Bible talks about that there are seven spirits of God in Revelation chapter 1, verse 4, chapter 3, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 6, and the seven spirits are listed in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. So God has a thing for the number seven. That's why there are seven references to Jesus Christ, the Word of God. And the Word is God. The Word was God, it says in John chapter 1, verse 1. So if you are being led to believe that Jesus Christ and God the Father are somehow two separate beings doing their own things and whatever else, each can claim the title God, but not fully because, you know, it's insanity. You've been lied to if you believe in the Trinity.